welcome back everyone and in this specific video we'll be looking at the transnet architecture so let us begin so then in densenet uh, we see the reason for why densenet was ever brought into the picture so the problems arise with cnns when they go deeper this is because the path for information from the input layer until the output layer info gradient in the opposite direction becomes so big that they can get vanished before reaching the other side so the authors of densenet uh, uh, wanted to solve this problem by ensuring maximum information and hence gradient flow so to do this they simply connect every layer directly with each other so this in, in, in implies that every pro proceeding layer of the dense net was connected with the with the previous layers before it such so that uh, essentially we see that this enabled dense net to have fewer parameters than an equivalent traditional cnn as there is no need to learn redundant feature maps so another problem with very deep neural networks was the problem to train because of the mentioned flow of information and gradients. So DenseNet solved this issue since each layer has direct access to the gradients from the loss function and the original input image. So this is now the stream that I confused when I was implementing the mobile net. So DenseNet do not sum the output feature maps of the layer with the incoming feature maps, but concatenate them. So since we are concatenating feature maps, this channel dimension is increasing at every layer. Every layer has access to its preceding feature maps and therefore to the collective knowledge. So with that in mind on the history of how DenseNet came about, let us begin to implement the DenseNet architecture. So well, let us begin. So first of all, where I implement the TensorFlow library, the TensorFlow framework, the framework for which I will use to implement the DenseNet. Then after that, sorry, I'll, I'll import the layers that are needed. Uh, then uh, I import my custom deep plot file that I'll be using. So before we go any further, I want us to look briefly into the the dense architecture. So while scripting through this in a note in table one we see that in this statement says that note that each conv layer shown in the table corresponds to the sequence patch normalization value in the con convolution layer so in this case scenario we'll implement therefore a a batch value con a con layer that will imply all the con layers that we we have seen in the table shown previously so that's what we do first so you see the batch rail and the con operation so let us get to understand the dense net architecture so when we have the input first there is a a convolution then at the input, of course, the convolution is preceded by batch normalization. Then after that, we have a max pooling. Then there is a dense block. And this one is a transitional layer. So dense block and transitional layer. Dense block, transitional layer. So while getting to understand this one, we see that each proceeding layer is 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 you know, for instance each preceding layer is connected to every other preceding layer in the architecture such that you see this white it's 
concatenated here but then since this one is concatenated is this after applying it here it's concatenated here so essentially it's like this one is concatenated with all the preceding layers of our density architecture so of the base layers you see the dense block and the transitional layers and then we know that for each convolution is a batch normalization uh, batch normalization rather and conv so after getting to understand that now we want to build a dense block mm. so let us go again and view the architecture so here we have the input image here then this convolution is this convolution here so we see that this convolution ends is batch normalization value corner then we have a max pooling then we start our dense block so we see that the dense block essentially we are going to focus on the dense net 121 architecture we see that it's conv one by one then conv three by three of course as we all know the conv stands for the batch normalization rail conv so conv one by one and conv three by three so here we see it has two layers the dense block so this is for the conv one by one and this for the conv three by three and also of of consideration is the fact that conv one by one has four times the number of filters as conv three by three so after building the dense block we can then build the transitional layer so we see that the transitional layer is a convolution operation and an average pooling operation with stride 2 by stride 2 and pool size 2 by 2 so we see a con then average pooling with pool size 2 by 2 and stride 2 so that's for the transition layer then after finishing that part therefore so we've already dealt with the base blocks for the dense net that is the dense block and the transitional layer and the batch really batch normalization really con block so we want to build the architecture for the dense net 121 so we have an input so in this scenario i use the functional api to implement the, the architecture so we have input then after the input uh, we after the input we know that it ought to be it ought to be not conv 2d but the batch really conv so i need to change that one so we see that the batch really conv gets filters can also size and strikes so here we need to change this one so that it becomes batch batch normalization really conv so filters no size and traits to yeah, so this one is not, not to be used as specifically stated by this statement and then we go to max pooling and then we go to 
the dense blocks where we see we'll repeat the first dense block six times the second dense block 12 times the third one 24 times the fourth one 16 times so hence the loop operation that we'll be doing here so we see that after the first dense block we have a transition layer after the second one we again have a transition layer after the third one we have a transition layer but then after the fourth dense block there's no transition layer so that's why i've done this one so for the for the fourth dense block so this one this one I also need to change this one so that I'll say that I'll use enumerate I'll use enumerate then after using enumerate I use index then I'll say if index is not equal to three so for all other dense blocks except the last dense block we'll use the transition layer so we see that essentially here we see that we get to uh, take the previous layer the previous layer the current layer and we concatenate it so while looping through the dense block we'll see that the concatenations will be from all the uh, from all the preceding dense blocks to every other dense block that will appear after so that's what we are achieving here then we see that after that we pass it through a global average pooling 2d here and then a dense layer of activation softmax so after that run so that i run it through the dense blocks then through the global average pooling in the output and then we create our dense block summary then there we have it so this is basically how we uh, have implemented our dense block so essentially one other thing i'd like to talk about is before I finish is this 32 is known as the growth rate so essentially it's the number of filters of the dense blocks so you can also see it from uh, another additional diagram you can see here from this additional diagram that this is our input convolution then this is our first dense block then this is our transition layer so our dense block takes this convolution then it concatenates it with the with this one we know that the first one repeats six times so it's six times 32 then plus 64 so for each dense block we have growth rate of growth rate of 32 so i've assumed it as the number of output filters of the dense blocks but but uh, you can correct me in the current comments below if i'm wrong so essentially this is the input convolution this is the first dense block repeating six times then transition layer second dense block repeating 12 times then transition layer then third dense block repeating 24 times then transition layer then we see four dense block block repeating 16 times but since there's no transition layer that's why we had to do this 
so that's it on implementation of the dense net architecture so yes so thank you for watching